Right then guys, today um, basically um, Mr. Ply Tiger and Sparky Projects have figured out what this was for me. <laughs> um, it's actually a triggered spark gap. Um, so basically the arc won't jump from one to the other without it being triggered with this center plate. I'm just going to show you a very quick demonstration on how it, how it works. Um, and I'll explain why it's so useful to me after I've done the done the demonstration. Now, neon sign transformer is switched on. Absolutely nothing. Just for people complaining sake, I've got my VDE, which I know are only a thousand volt, but I've been tested up to 25 kV. It's only 8 kV transformer, and this cable is 40 kV rated, believe it or not. So I'll show you how you trigger. The spark gap. Okay, so I can turn it off, and literally it just takes a tap just to start it going. I can leave it there. Okay. Sometimes it will jump to that center plate, and I can turn it off by pulling an arc obviously sort of shorten it out um, when you've obviously got nothing I'll zoom in just so you can see I'm sure you'll get it but just a little tiny and that's what triggers the spark gap so I'm going to turn that off now now the reason this is so handy is because um, basically um, my big Tesla coil that is not getting very far building wise um, due to um, resources and space and effort because obviously it takes a long time for me to do stuff um, but the major issue I've got at the moment is my spark gap now I was, this is a suggestion from Sparky um, Sparky Projects, you'll all know Sparky so yeah thanks for this one um, basically what I can do is I can use this and this so top electrode bottom electrode that's my main spark gap for my double potential like for my two 20 kV potential transformers now I can hear you all saying why would you want to go with two 20 kVs um, on a Tesla coil um, now it was purely because it was gonna fry the electrodes basically on my rotary spark gap so this is where the plan comes in my rotary spark gap runs with say um, a potential transformer for instance but very like ballasted to say 250 watts so very high voltage um, but really really low ampage now that won't destroy my spark gap um, it won't burn the electrodes out because the ampage will be so low so my rotary spark gap can be the trigger for the main gap here so that's pretty handy um, this does still have a vacuum in it to an extent but only so I could show you with a neon side transformer when it's running as a spark gap for my Tesla coil there will be no vacuum on it, it will actually have air being pumped through it in one side out the other um, but I just thought it was an interesting thing to sort of show how I don't know if it will because it might have lost its vacuum how you can just trigger it, yeah, there you go so. Trigger. So yeah, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Fly Tiger, Sparky Projects. If any of you guys got any advice, help, anything you want to give, I'm always, one way, always definitely open for a bit of advice, especially when it comes to uh, Tesla coils and other people's experiences. I'm sure there's better ways of doing it than what I've come up with, what other people have come up with. Um, and obviously sharing knowledge is the main main point of it really so anyway guys thanks for watching I hope that explains a little bit on triggered spark gaps and what I'm going to be using it for um, so I bought something really cool basically 
that I really really like and uh, it's actually going to have a uh, very good use hopefully uh, you know it might not work it might, might not go to plan but with any luck it will go to plan everything will be sweet awesome when I do get my Tesla coil up and running it will be instead of being 40 kV I will run it at 20 kV I will double the amperage because these this spark gap can take it and that just means running the transformers in a different configuration not sticking 200 volts into it to have 40 kV um, I can even run them centre tapped or in parallel so that's the outputs I can run the inputs parallel or series if I run it in series it's got to be 200 volts input if I run it in parallel it's 100 volts input so but anyway guys enough of the rambling please like comment subscribe and any other stuff that everyone likes to do give it the old thumbs up and um, yeah I will try and get some of the things done that people have asked me to do um, I know Anton would like to see a capacitor across it um, which I would also like to see so uh, maybe we'll try that next see what happens so anyway guys thanks for watching and uh, we shall uh, speak again soon <laughs>